Hey Google, what is Ada Fruit Industries? According to Wikipedia, Ada Fruit Industries is an open source hardware company based in New York City. It was founded by Limmer Fried in 2005. Live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Ada Fruit Industries is here. <laughs> we have skulls. Yeah. Well, our skulls are inside of our head. We're just Kind of where they should stay. It's a skeleton trapped inside of me. It's right crazy. Yeah. Uh, okay. We got an exciting show for you tonight. It's me, Lady Ada, with me, Mr. Lady Ada, who has yeah. a skull. And uh, I got an exciting show for you filled with robots, with eyeballs, stuff, skulls, machine learning, do products, and more. Let's kick it off because we got a whole bunch of stuff. That's right. What's on tonight's show? On tonight's show, the code is STEM Sound. Use the code STEM Sound on the Adafruit store on checkout. You will get 10% off. Everything in stock, except for gift certificates, AdaBox, and Codecademy courses. It supports us, a loan-free, venture capital-free company manufacturing in the U.S. That's more important than ever if you watch the news. <laughs> so if you want to support a cool company like Adafruit and uh, know where the money's going and know where the money came from, um, use the code, save a buck or two, and keep us in business. Show and tell people around the world showing and sharing their projects. Lady Ada will talk about who is on the show and tell and the projects they shared. We got some JP workshops and previews of what he's doing and more, including a Make Code Minute. We got Python on hardware, all the cool Python stuff going on, different boards and more. Time travel, look around the world of makers, hackers, artists, engineers, and events. Get some help wanted, some postings from the Adafruit Jobs Board, jobs.adafruit.com. 3D printing, got some videos from Noah and Pedro. We have some made in New York City factory footage, factory footage here from our factory in New York City. We've got some new products. We'll answer your questions. We do that on Discord. In fact, if you're watching this right now, go to adafruit.it slash Discord. That's where we hang out and go to the live broadcast channel. At the end, we answer questions and we'll talk about this in a bit, but we are up to now 14,000 people. Join us. Yay, it's humans, bots. We'll do some top secret. We'll give something away with a trivia question at the end. All that and more on, you guessed it, Ask an Engineer. That's us. Okay, uh, Lady Ada, let's uh, pay some bills. Yes. So first up, um, that code is Stemasound. It'll Stemma all sound. make sense. It sounds good. Stemasound. Um, it'll all make sense later when we get into the show. 10%. Um, when people add stuff to their cart, not only could they save some money, but they could get free stuff. What's they get some stuff? cool, useful, free stuff. One dollar or more which is pretty much every order, you'll get a free vinyl Blinka sticker with circuitpython.org. Handily uh, typed below Blinka, happy curled body. Uh, she's our CircuitPython mascot. She loves to tell you about CircuitPython, the easiest, best way to program microcontrollers. That sticker is yours. You can stick it on anything, you, your laptop, your skateboard, your pets, as long as they're cool with it. Uh, $99 or more, you'll get a free promo proto half size breadboard, great for taking your Bread, uh, solderless breadboard projects and soldering them for permanent installation. 
$199 or more, you get free UPS ground shipping in the continental US. That's high quality, trackable, insured shipping that will get to you when it says it's going to get to you. And at $299 or more, you'll get a free Circuit Playground Express, our all-in-one development platform that supports all sorts of different programming languages like Arduino and CircuitPython and TeenyGo and MicroLisp and Code.org, CS Discoveries and MakeBlock and make, yeah, everything basically. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. And it's got all the LEDs, button sensors you want built into it. So it's really easy to get your project started right. Soon it's going to even support another IDE. We'll talk about that later too. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's what we got. Freebies. All right. Like Lady Ada said, UPS ground, US is the way to go. Postal, if you're into mysteries sometimes. Well, it's Halloween. It, maybe you want a mystery of where your package went. Yeah. And, I'll get there eventually. Just yeah. And uh, take a DHL International, it'll sail through customs and more. If you're in New York City, check out before 11 a.m. If it's a zip code that's in Manhattan, we can get it to you same day. It'll say it on the screen, and you just hit I want it same day. All right, every week we do a show and tell. People around the world showing and sharing projects. Lady Ada, who is on the show and tell this week, and what did they share? I'm glad you asked. Phil B came by to show off some retro technology. He's got a 1983 credit card shaped calculator. Um, it was really neat. It still worked. It was from Casio, and he, he, he had one that was broken, so he could take it apart. We could look at how it was built, which was pretty cool. Lots of interesting techniques. Aaron's working on a 3D printed fabric bra, so it's got these like heart shaped scales that are 3D printed on the fabric, and then she's making a NeoPixel um, bra out of it, so it yeah. looks nice, good for cosplay, dancing. I mentioned this on the show and tell, mm -hmm. but I like th this particular uh, project, because a lot of makers are doing this now. They, they saw that original video, and now they're doing 3D printing on fabric. But it's one of those 3D printing projects that gets the 3D print out of the garage, basement, workshop. Yeah, and I like how it's, it's mixed with textiles, which is a skill that humans have been up. doing for a long time. Yeah. So yeah. it's basically like, this is, a, this is as close as we've got to like 3D printing your clothing so yeah. far. So Very cool interesting structural watch clothing. Yeah, watch it later. All right, uh, Melissa came by with a fun project. She took a Halloween M4, put our thermal sensor on the back. Now it's a thermal camera. And she's pointed at some stuff and she's alive, which is good to hear. We can yeah. see her skeleton. Brian is working on an Arduino library for the MPU 6050, which is an accelerometer and gyro. And he showed off it working using the Arduino plotter by twisting and moving and tilting the sensor. Um, you could get the output to move up and down. So that's a good way to know that your project and code is working. It's part of what take, writing a driver takes. It's a lot of effort. Uh, he also has temperature output. Nice bonus. And he also showed off a demo of this OLED bonnet with a gigantic OLED. Um, and that's uh, another product he's been working on. He wrote the driver for that last week. GP uh, showed off the ventriloquist build that, that he's working on. Uh, it's a ventriloquist dummy using um, the uh, monster mask eyes. Noan Pedro had uh, a project this week, antenna eyes, so taking the monster mask eyes and putting them onto antenna stocks for a um, neat cosplay project where um, you know the eyes don't have to be over your face, they can be on a headband. I'll show the video later. Scott previewed uh, a React Native BLE code editor. So right now, it can read code from a BLE device. Uh, next step is getting REPL output, saving it. A lot to go, but so far, so good. Yeah, this is going to be a, basically like a wireless code editor that um, if it sees a board that's circuit Python based, uh, it'll see what code that pi is, and I'll show it on the screen and then you can start doing code edits. So we have to come up with a name tonight after this. So if anyone has any neat names for a code editor that's wireless that works with CircuitPython, um, it'll be on iOS and Android and probably Chromebooks. Yeah, um, and maybe web, B web Bluetooth web, as well. Yeah, uh, post up in the live broadcast chat because uh, we'll come up with some ideas, but we're about to probably do a, a alpha soon. So yeah. you're gonna have to come up with a name. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, we also had Ron and Thomas come by. Um, they together wrote a make code tic-tac-toe game. We battled it out. I won. But I guess that's how it goes sometimes. No, well, I don't know. Happy birthday, Thomas, by the way. And thank you for being a, a gracious person to letting Lady Ada win. I know. I, I, I know learned, you let me. Uh, I've like, learned. You just, just let her win these games because she gets upset if you, you win all the time. That's why anytime we play video games, I just let you win. Not because you're way better at video uh -huh. games, she is. Um, so now I just say, oh, you know. Well, we're gonna, we play competitive tic-tac-toe. Yeah. So I'm actually quite experienced in this. Okay. Um, but an excellent game using MakeCode Arcade. 
and learn some uh, tricks and tips on how complicated projects can be and how to make small projects that you build on, not just building one gigantic thing. Uh, also, now you know how, how it takes a lot of effort to get games out. So when you see bugs or delays in games, you know why. You're like, wow, that's a lot of code. Uh, Dave B. Uh, showed up a project he's working on with the students on uh, doing uh, binary code vision detection on Raspberry Pi using an 8x8 LED matrix uh, to transmit uh, binary data. So it's kind of neat, basically doing a, a vision, like binary clock yeah. data transfer. And he showed the video where it's decoding text uh, real time. It's incredibly fast. OpenCV is pretty cool. And then it has a scooter that he's rebuilding. And uh, so far, so good. Uh, it's going really fast. He's going to stay safe, he says and uh, hopefully get the braking system working soon. All That's right. what he was on Show and Tell. All participants on the Show and Tell get an As Seen on the Show and Tell sticker. Email support at adafruit.com. If you're a kid, please have a parent guardian-like entity do that for you. It's part of our Adafruit live series of shows. Tomorrow is JP's show, 4 p.m. Eastern. And uh, here's a preview. Uh, sorry, here's a look back of what was on last week. was the good candy, bad candy, and then this is a preview of what he's gonna show tomorrow. Okay, so um, some breaking news. Uh, we have what? only a few Ada boxes left because we, a lot of people have them already. Yeah. So when we run, we got some, like, last when we run all the credit we're, cards, yeah. some people, they've changed their address or their credit card expired or they've just ghosted the world or whatever. Um, so then we have a couple extras just for this very small period of time. Yeah. So if you go to adabox.com tonight, right now, the second, and order an Adabox, tomorrow is probably the last day we're going to allow that, but you could order Slip it tonight in, and it minute. would ship we tomorrow have like three, or Friday. We have three boxes left. Yeah. So... Well, there, yeah, there's, there's a, probably a couple more since the credit cards yeah. thing happens. When, but not that many. Yeah, so it's like oh, one of the things that happens is people don't update their credit card yeah. after they get a new one, things like that. So we contact them and everything, but we have a few Ada boxes. It's twice as fun as the Halloween one last year, to give you a clue. Um, we're still not going to tell everybody what it is until we're done. We're done. But next week on Wednesday at 8 p.m., JP's doing the unboxing. So you have something to look forward to. You could order it right now tonight, adabox.com. And, you might, yeah, you could get and it. you'll get it before probably the unboxing. Yeah. So I'll mention this again, and I'll remind folks again, but this is, this is it, 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 it. And this also means that you're set up for the next adabox, which is in uh, November, that ships out. December. Yeah, December-ish. Yeah, yeah November, November, December. Um, and that's the holiday one. We'll probably not have enough uh, openings. Yeah. So if you get in now, that means you get the, the next one. Yep. So, okay. Oof. All right, so next up, um, this is Make Code Minute. JP does this every single week. Take it away, JP. So for the Make Code Minute today, what I wanted to do is show you how you can use the Circuit Playground Express as a color picker. And the, the way we're going to do this is that there's a light sensor on here uh, as well as a NeoPixel right next to the light sensor. And so inside of the uh, make code, we can use this ambient color block. If you look under inputs, you'll see uh, there's this item called ambient color. And there's a whole lot going on under the hood of that block because when we use it, what it'll do is, I've set this so that anytime I press the B button on the Circuit Playground Express, it's going to update this variable called color pick that I created with the ambient color. And it does this by flashing through the red, green, blue, and white of the NeoPixel and then checking the reflection value so it's getting different levels depending on the reflected light coming off of the object. Then what I do is I light up all of the other NeoPixels using that uh, color that I've just chosen. So let's, uh, let's show this in action. Uh, what I have is a alligator clip that's red. 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this near that little eye icon you see there. And it flashed and came up with, hey, that's red. So now let me try it with a yellow one. So I'll clear the lights with the A button. And now it picked yellow. Uh, I've got a green one on here. This is a little button cap of ours. Let's see if that works. Yeah, and it gets green. Uh, so it's really kind of a cool demo and uh, a neat way to learn about RGB light and how you can use it to create your own color pickle, picker, not a color pickle, a color picker right inside of Make Code running on the Circuit Playground Express. And that's your Make Code Minute. That's one of my favorite tricks that yeah. you can do by using RGB LED and a plain light sensor, you can make an RGB sensor, it's a color sensor. Um, it's cool. So not only is that a cool tip that you got there, yeah, yeah. but these are in the new Make Code newsletter. Okay. All these. So uh, I heard about this. What, what's, Adafruitdaily.com. What's that? What you go to that? Adafruitdaily.com, completely separate site. We never spam anyone. Go to Adafruitdaily.com and you'll see there's a Make Code newsletter. Next one's going out beginning of October. Okay, and this is it covers everything but Make Code. Yeah. What about like micro bits? Yeah. What about like Make Code Arcade? Mm, yeah. Everything. Yeah. So no matter what. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's cool. You should sign up. Yeah. Is it free? Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> these are easy questions. Sold. <laughs> okay. It's almost like I know the answer already. It's Python on hardware time. Yay! Okay. Blinka, blinka, blinka. Well, okay. let me start up the headline generator. Man, Sir, it was a crazy uh, week. Python snakes its way to the STM32. We will play this video a little bit later at the end for top secret. Yeah, so But CircuitPython snakes its way to the STM32. It's uh, should the analog input of the ST32F4 port of CircuitPython using Moo. And um, in case you didn't know, we are working on all sorts of things with the STM line. Yeah, it's actually Circuit Python 5 was supposed to be mostly BLE, but it's kind of turning into a little bit of an STM party, which now is it's STM which is fine. And it's STM and, it, and wireless. It's cool. So that's why the poster that we'll have in the store soon has these little wireless things. But it's also it's also STM32. It's cool. Um, this was kind of breaking news. This breaking is news. Serpente, a tiny Circuit Python prototyping board. If you remember the DigiSpark from a while ago. Which is no longer, I think it's no longer being made. Yeah. Uh, Arturo posted this up, and I'm like, this is so cool. I immediately bought four. And you can either get it as a Type A USB plug or a Type C. I love in. the Type C thing yeah, there. That's cool. nice, and it's basically like a trinket, but he added some flash, so there's a lot more storage. So you, yeah. you get Circuit Python with a little bit of flash chip, and it's like you know easy to plug into a breadboard. And if you've got a DigiSpark project, you can upgrade it with yep. a SAMD21, which is like 16 billion times faster. All right, this is a Mach X O Prog. It's the programming lattice on the Mach X O2 with CircuitPython. This is a library that allows you to update the internal flash on one of these FPGA boards. Oh, that's kind of handy. That's right. Oh, so, we should add that to the um, our helper. Because you know, I wrote an AVR programmer because I was like, I was like, I'm, I wanted a way to do drag and drop like yeah. AVR programming. So this is really that's handy. Cool. Okay, next up. Uh, one of my favorite podcasters and people in the world, Scott Hanselman, had Scott on the show. Double, Double Scott. Scott. And uh, this was Learning Circuit Python, which is Scott, Scott Shawcroft, um, with the Han Hansel Minutes Technology Podcast. Um, besides Adafruit, I think the Hansel Minutes Technology Podcast is like one of the longest running tech podcasts. So with Ask an Engineer and Show and Tell, yeah. it's, you know, it's a decade and he has 700 episodes. So he's up there too. Um, so listen in, Scott did a really good job. Well, Scott's. This is the preview that Scott showed on the show and tell, and I also had this in the newsletter this Check week. Check out the show and tell if you want to see it live. Yeah. So far, the, the name that someone put in the chat is kind of nice. What P is it? Pie Drop. Ooh, Ooh pie, drop. pie Drop, yeah. Pie drop. So yeah, that might be a name. Okay. Also, we have a new uh, segment inside of the newsletter, and also in this segment, where we take a look at what folks on the Circuit Python team are doing. Um, there's a lot going on, so we wanted to try to have, like, here's some of the stuff they're up to. So this was what Brian was working on. Um, you probably know this is a temperature sensor, and then this is the uh, thing that he showed on the show and tell. Then we also have... That's um, cool. Yeah, that was in progress OLED. That's not the final OLED. Yeah. That's why he was like, oh, it's not quite working, but now it looks great. All right, and then this was from uh, Jepler, and this is a fun project that Jepler made created a prototype PCB that bridges the user port, serial port of the classic Commodore 64, and any feather. That's cool. And then this is um, working uh, through a rework of the internal pins 
a pin organization of the STM32 port. So remember when we were talking about that before? Well, this is what goes into making a port. Yeah, and what's interesting is, you know, we are, you know, MicroPython has STM32F support of m multiple varieties, which is super cool, but we have to architect it to fit within the standard circuit Python hardware API and the way we define boards. So it's, it, there's a lot of this underpinning structure that we have to get into a really good spot because then we'll be able to, just like you know, you saw the Serpenti, so we didn't make the Serpenti, that's from the community. Yeah. People are able to create their own boards and easily add them into our port support um, so that we can make downloads yeah. for them because we, we have a standardized structure. To be straight up, like we probably wouldn't get to doing this. We well, like, I wouldn't get to this. We wouldn't get to this This is cool, while. but I'm, I, I'm so busy. Yeah, and so other people can make their own CircuitPython boards. Um, it'll show up at circuitpython.org slash downloads. Arturo, who made this, he's like, this is great because now anytime there's a CircuitPython update, there's an automatic build. You have two for my device. Um, okay, Melissa, working on the CircuitPython NVIDIA guide. That so, guide went live. Yeah. So this it's focused on the NVIDIA Jetson Nano, which is kind of the most popular board right now. But the same code should work on like the TX1, the TX2. We just, they were kind of pricey, so we didn't buy one. We okay. have a Nano. So on to some community stuff. This is um, the cover of the new Circuit Python and Moo book that's coming out in Japan, and they also posted up a little video. So I'm only going to play a bit of it, but uh, this is a video that promotes some of the things you can do with Circuit Python on Circuit Playground Express and with Moo. We have some updates on circuitpython.org. Uh, here's some of the new boards. This is the giant discovery board. This is the STM32 F12 discovery board, which is what we're using to bring up CircuitPython. Yeah. It's, a, it's a great chip with a lot of uh, uh, support, and it has a ton of USB endpoints, which is why we're kind of focusing on that. But we're also going to support other STM32 chips like this STM32 F411 dev yeah. board, and we'll just keep going. Yeah. Another uh, one that's new is the Pew Pew M4. This is the update to the Pew Pew with a nice uh, TFT screen, 7051 by DevShipu. Uh, hopefully we'll even work with MakeCode Arcade. I like how it has a uh, AAA battery pack on the back, so you don't need a LiPo charger. Yeah. Uh, other community projects, this is um, from LaserGoo. It's a NOAA weather satellite tracker using CircuitPython powered Pi Portal. Currently modifying the tracker code that we have up, and they'll be adding um, the other NOAA 18 and 19 to track it simultaneously. Um, this is a cool project. This has been making the rounds. This is really neat. This is using a trinket. Also, uh, nice swords. this is uh, something I've been watching and now it's live. Yeah, you thought, you thought this was interesting. Yeah, so this is a micro bit based little drone and their Kickstarter went live today I believe or yesterday and I'm a backer and uh, I grabbed this video just to, to show you um, we'll see it's gonna ship next year 2020 the best part of a Kickstarter is imagining that you'll have it so um, right now I'm having a lot of, a lot of fun um, but here's a video of it in action If you're thinking about going to PyCon, the call for speakers is up. A lot of people are doing Python on hardware now, so and look, there's chance. a little robot on the right. A little robot. Actually, there's two robots. Yeah, Ooh, a lot of robots. PyCon UK just happened, and there was a big community meetup. Thanks, Carlos, for posting this up. This was a bunch of Python on hardware folks hanging out, showing what they made. They made keyboards. So you got some MicroPython stuff, CircuitPython stuff, all sorts of Python on hardware things, you got microbit things, 
and more. And that is the community news for the week. Yeah, do you want to want me to show this last this thing with this? So next up, let's do time travel. Okay. We're going to... What happened in the past? Well, we're going to travel in time. To last so weekend? To answer your question, <laughs> that's for the top oh, secret. Oh, yeah. that's top so, secret? Okay. Yeah. Um, Sorry. So one thing, this is uh, just some news. I'm going to mention it briefly because unclear what's going to happen. Okay. For people who run businesses and have electronics and postal stuff. Yeah. This, we hear this every year. So This has come up. This is now like the fifth time. So the U.S. might leave the Global Postal Union, which means, you know how you get that free cheap shipping from eBay or Alibaba or Taobao? That might go away. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? I've or heard not. this every year forever. But the U.S. is exiting all sorts of things constantly now. That's well, our, that's well our we're new... jealous of the U.K. Yeah. So um, we have to keep up with uh, the, the rest of the countries yeah. that are exiting things. So we'll see what happens. Now, does this affect Adafruit? No. And here's a couple of reasons because we were, you know, and I, we were talking about this. Um, so if you're an international customer, order locally. We have 2,000 distributors. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also just continue to use DHL or yeah. Postal, whatever. Postal rates might go up. We don't know. And then also... Um, would it be more fair for shipping costs to be closer to reality for everyone? Yes. Probably. So People might not ship 15 packages if it wasn't free. Yeah, so, so the free shipping that's always out there, someone pays for it somewhere. So it would be nice if everyone kind of got used to the idea that shipping actually isn't free. It comes from somewhere. Ga so, gas is burned. Yeah, the, the, I think people would be a little smarter about their purchasing habits. Mm. Uh, if they had a cost associated with the shipping. So we'll see. I think it'd be nice if like, if you're ordering something, there should, there should be a way to see, see what the cost really is. Yeah. So you can decide if it's worth it or not. Anyways, um, next up, we had a STEM Sunday. So I'm gonna play the video, and then we had a machine learning Monday. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna play that video, mm -hmm. and then um, then we're gonna keep moving. Okay. Okay. So the two things: STEM is Sunday with the little tiny Pi, uh, mini Pi TFT. Yes. And then the other thing we did was getting Google Assistant on the BrainCraft hat. Right. So I'm gonna do this back to back. Okay. Yeah. So this is Take what, it away. This is what we've been up to. I know. So many videos. All right. What is this? This is a STEM is Sunday video. So everyone knows a long time ago we designed the Pi TFT, which is this large 2.8 inch TFT, but displays are getting so small and high resolution. So this little display is 240 by 135, which is just good enough that you can do console stuff on it. So I designed this little Raspberry Pi like mini hat. It's got two buttons and this display. And then on the bottom, I've even put a stomach connector because why not like 10 cents a piece so that you can connect um, chainable I squared C devices like this low cost accelerometer. And then on the console, I can use a keyboard. Like I can actually just type on it. So if I do up arrow, I can run the last Python script and I'll hit return. And then that's printing out the accelerometer data as I'm moving it around and then can control C to get out of that. And I'm back to my prompt. So Wedding kernel drivers, trying out ST7789 stuff, and uh, new upcoming STEMA host. Hey Google, what is machine learning? According to Wikipedia, machine learning is the scientific study of algorithms and statistical models that computer systems use to perform a specific task without using explicit instructions, relying on patterns and inference instead. Okay, and then big news for us on Sunday, uh, I think like around 1 a.m. or so, we hit 14,000 humans on Discord. Yay! So we have 14,028. If you go to adafruit.it slash Discord, um, here's a little bit of historic. So we started this uh, back on July of 2017, hit 5,000 on April 13th, 2018. And then more recently, we hit 13,000 July 14th. When we were talking together with our team, Brian Sedacia said, hey, is there a chart? And I'm like, no, but the data's up there. Well, maybe someone will make a chart. So you made a chart. He loves plotting stuff. And so he's here's, a here's what it looks like. So by the year uh, 3040, every human every will be human. <laughs> yeah. on the Adafruit Discord server. And good. I think that'll be a good thing for people. Okay. Well, we'll all get along. We'll have yeah. something in common. We also released a video last week. This is S is the, uh, S is the, in the, 
is for the security. S, the S and IoT. IoT is for yeah, security. Yeah, because there isn't. And so um, it's getting rave reviews on the YouTubes. Wow. So check it out. Um, it's a video about how to make really good secure IoT devices, things to think about and more. Other things going on. We have jobs.adafruit.com. It's the only free jobs board for cool companies that want to have cool people in the maker world and electronics. And it's also um, moderated by us, so we make sure there's nothing sketchy or scammy. And you can also post up your skills. So I don't think there's another one like it. And this week, there's an instructor for, um, probably getting his name wrong. Okangan? Okang Okanagan? Okanagan? Okanagan. Okanagan. Okanagan in yeah. Canada. Um, if you want to be a professor there, uh, there's two different jobs. So check it out, contractor uh, position, and read all about it on jobs.adafruit.com. Lady Ada, we are an open source hardware company. We are. And before we get to the guides, I have some open source hardware news. Yes. First up, October is Open Hardware Month. That's in like two weeks. That's right. So Open Hardware Month is going to be all of October. Yeah. And there's a listing of all the things going on. We're doing something every day in some way. And if you scroll down on the site that has all the events listing, we're going to have stuff on Ask an Engineer. We'll have stuff in Discord. We're going to do all sorts of things. And next year, 2020, March, here in New York is going to be the uh, Open Hardware Summit. We were at the first one. You keynoted the first one. We're going to be at this one. We're going to be at this one because we don't need to get in a plane, train, or automobile. Correct. And um, they just opened up sponsorships. Adafruit's a sponsor. So uh, they're celebrating 10 years. If you're thinking of sponsoring, go there check it out this is also another anniversary and so every three to six months i try to update this chart yes so it's 20 years of the keyhole logo which the osi logo is yeah leading all the way up to now 20 yes. years i'd love to see a collection of all it's a taxonomy <laughs> so over on the far left you see flash enabled that's the logo i made in 1999 it's on the Wayback machine which is super cool because I can just like link to someone and say like, nope, I made this a long time ago. OSI has the keyhole logo, fun story with that. They filed the trademark in 2008. Pearl Jam had it on a shirt. And then if you go to the, the right, as you go by, there's OSI incubators, open source radio. I like the open source chess one. The red one is Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Not related, but yeah. still pretty cool. And then the next row over is Open Source Robotics. I like that because it looks like a claw or a bolt. Um, I like the rocket ones. I like the little gear ones with the, the uh, atoms flying around. And then now we're in the hardware land. Osh Stencils, Open Source Hardware. That was a community-made logo. There was an Open Source Sexware one. Um, you know, little, made out of wings. Yeah. <laughs> then you've got the gears combining with OSI. Then you've got some wrenches and some gears. Then you've got a combination of the two. And then OpenCV, fairly recent, that uses the like keyhole that. logo yeah. in RGB. Then you've got 20 years of open source initiative. Open then brains. you've got open source hardware for brands. That's like open machine learning. And then learning. Uber just stole this Uber, shit. Uber, no. <laughs> Uber's being Uber. Yeah. Uber's and then Uber. you've got... All the um, open VPN is a pretty. That's pretty close. Then you've got all of the open hardware ones at the top, and then open VPN, which is not only a keyhole, but it's a key. Yeah. And then this other one is like Bob Designs. He he uh, uh, po posted this up, and he said, "Hey, I got. I, I was inspired by this logo too." So um, this is the 20 years of logos. Enjoy it. They're looking good. Okay. We have nine thousand. Well, sorry, we have one thousand nine hundred ninety-five. Um, Very close guides. to 2,000 what, guide. what are the guides this week, Lady Ada? Well, I'm glad you asked. So we've got uh, Fish Head Monster Mask Eyes from JP, uh, which is a really cool project where he takes a mask that has eyes on opposite sides of the head and um, replaces them with monster mask eyes using the detachable cable, which was your invention, Phil. My, I just implemented it. And we also have the secret Ada Box 13 unboxing. What is Ada Box 13? I'm not going to tell you because I don't want to spoil it. So you can check out the guide if you'd like, see what it is. And remember, well, we have like one or two slots left. We also have um, a guide for the uh, Alpha Circuit Playground Blue Fruit Board. So um, we released this, we're getting a couple hundred into the community. Circuit Python code, Arduino code, it's kind of happening, it's a little early, but we wanted to get these into people's hands so they could start playing um, with this hardware. And we have a guide to get people started uh, with it. Um, the Capacitive Touch Pulsing Heart is a neat uh, Halloween-themed project where um, a circuit playground beats uh, like a heart inside of a 3D printed enclosure and when you touch it, it turns on. It starts beating when you hold it, thanks to capacitive touch sensing. 
which is, I, I love it. I love capacitive touch sensing. It's like my favorite sensing. We've got the glowing interactive crystal staff from Aaron, which is really neat because it uses the Circuit Playground Express accelerometer to detect tilt. So as you move it and tilt it, it has different effects. So like as you kind of point it towards someone, it can like light up the LEDs differently. So she did a really good job with this. She's a, she's like a NeoPixel fast LED expert. Let's play a little bit of the video snippet yes. as well. I love how the, just having a little bit of sensing can make a prop really interactive. Um, we've got the Monster Mask antenna eyes, we've got both short and long versions. Uh, short versions for people who want a non-soldering project, you just use the extension cable. Uh, and we even added code recently to let you tilt the eyes so they're more on top of the head. And we also have a version with long stems. We'll show the video shortly. Um, Melissa wrote a, um, up a new tool that we uh, had sponsored for Nick Tolterite, who's the author of Moo. This is a tool to keep your CircuitPython libraries up to date. It's a command line tool um, written in Python that when you run it, it will check your CircuitPython board and verify, you know, are you running all the latest libraries? And if not, it will even download the latest ones for you so you can always keep up to date. And last but not least, we have this rad project from Dano, which is a uh, cardboard, um, Cosplay sword is all cardboard construction using our new cosplay, um, hold on, our new cosplay uh, crafting kits that we just put in stock. Hold on, I gotta make sure that this is turned on. And um, it's got the NeoPixel strip along the edges that are hot glued in place, a Circuit Playground Express. Hold on, hold on. Oh, there you go. Uh, and then when you grab it, what's neat is that when you um, let go, it, sorry, when you let go, it turns off. And when you grab it, it lights up and does LED effects. Um, and this one is written also only in make code and no soldering, just alligator clip the LED strip on it. And you've got this cool sparkling uh, cosplay sword. Those are the guides. Yes. 1,995, we are getting close to 2,000. Yes, probably cool. like next week. Probably. Okay, Main New York City factory footage, Adafruit factory, take it away.
Street wouldn't be made in New York City factory footage without a sunrise or sunset right outside the windows. This is what the picking place to see every single night or day. This is uh, pretty nice. It's a nice sunset. Okay. Getting, getting darker earlier. Tack Pretty winter. printing. Don Pedro have their show every single Wednesday where you can learn how to make this stuff, but we're going to show you that video that we were talking about. These are the, this is the, eye, this is the eyeball video. Yeah, this is cool if you want to say cosplay as Jar Jar Binks. There's, there's at least one of you out there. Yeah. I think. We, uh, we watched... Explorers, Explorers, because I wanted they to show have. you the aliens. Yeah, yeah that was pretty good. Uh, eye stocks. The director Dante did the uh, Gremlins movie as well. Yeah. Okay. Let's watch this. You can tell too. Hey, what's up, folks? In this project, we'll show you how to make a pair of antenna eyes. You can build this into your own project and customize it to match your costume. The eyes are mounted to springs so they'll sway a bit when you move your head. In this project we'll use the Adafruit Monster Mask to make animated eyes. You can separate the two eyes and connect them back together using a cable. Check out the learn guide for a quick start on setting up your animated eyes. You can get the parts to build this project, links are in the description. Get started by downloading the files and 3D printing the parts. We use this DIY headband kit, but you can use something that already fits your head. You can use a pair of flush diagonal cutters to break apart the eyes. Just follow the perforations near the nose bridge. You want to do this in a well-ventilated area to avoid breathing in any of the dust or debris. Once they're separated, feel free to discard the little nose bridge. Onto the assembly, start by sliding the cover onto the headband. We'll use this to cover up the wires and battery. A compression spring is press fitted onto the 3D printed enclosure. You'll want to tightly wrap the coil around the posts. You could optionally hot glue them in place. With both sets made, they can be added to the headband by either slipping them on or wrapping the spring around the frame. Next, we can install the battery. The cover should have enough room for housing this battery. Then we can install the monster mask cable by threading it through the covering. These lenses will create a nice effect that will make the displays look more like actual eyeballs. Now we can plug in the monster mask cable. To reach the battery port, we wired up a JST extension cable. And with that in place, we can install the covers by press fitting them on. We printed these little couplers in NinjaFlex filament. This way we could cut them open and cover up the compression springs. This helps sell the effect and can match the color of your headband or costume. And there you have it! That's how you can build your own pair of antenna eyes. You could also splice a longer cable to create a taller set of antennas. We want to see what you come up with, so come on by the show and tell, all participants get a free vinyl sticker. Come and join the community by checking out the Adafruit Discord server. You can share projects and engage with makers from all over the world. Thanks so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe for more projects from Adafruit. Okay, and because it's almost Halloween time, we have a sped up, which is a cauldron. Yay, it's Halloween from now till end of October.
said, if you want to learn how to make all this stuff, every Wednesday, 3D Hangouts with Noah and Pedro. Before we go to new products, uh, we're going to do two things. One, reminder, this is it. This is really, really it. This is the end. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the fear of missing out thing, I think with that's why everyone looks at their phones. So yeah. humans don't, right now, a lot of humans, don't do anything more than look at their phone. Yeah. It's, it's, they, they stop counting. More than more than blinking, it's more. It's the most thing. So that's because you're you're worried about missing out. So you know Halloween's going to roll around, and you have the opportunity and not to miss six out. Six weeks from now, this you is would perfect have an timing. Box. You, you have, have an Ada box. Five weekends. Because what's going to happen is you're going to be looking at your phone all during October, and you'll be like, I didn't get an Ada box. I didn't get. I didn't get. I don't want to do. But now you do. can, and you can put things on social media, and you can put how much fun you're having. You're going to have your some Adabox. great Instagrams when yeah. you build stuff with this Ada box. So okay. Um, but if you just want to pick up something else, that's fine. Stem a sound. That's the discount code. Stem let's, uh, yep. let's, uh, let's do this thing. Ready? Yep. New, 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 new. New, 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 All right. Okay. Uh, first up. Finally in stock, we've got this. Look at this awesome video from new products this showing cool. off. This is the Arduino image loader demo showing how you can load bitmap images by connecting the TFT Gizmo to your Circuit Playground Express. We have this lovely 240 by 240 pixel display on uh, Circuit Playground Express. Um, you can use it with Arduino or Circuit Python, and it works with the Circuit Playground Classic, Express, or Blue Fruit. Um, I'll say that you're gonna get the best performance from the uh, new Blue Fruit Circuit Playground Express because it's the fastest, um, and you can use that with Arduino or Circuit Py uh, Python. If you're using it with the Express, um, you can use it with CircuitPython, but it's not very fast. I would recommend Arduino. And in uh, the classic, of course, Arduino is the only thing that work. I even have a little video on uh, the overhead I can show. So you can see it's um, running a little random number generator demo with- A little pocket Python, that's cute. Ripple. Yeah, this is kind of the extent of what it can do. Um, and you've got the uh, Circuit Playground um, Express still. Oh, I should have rotated the code, but whatever. Uh, it's upside down. And then you still have a speaker connector down here. So if you want to have audio playback, you can plug in the speaker. It's one watt speaker that we love. Uh, we also have a three watt speaker and it just bolts yeah. in. So it's a really easy way to add a little display. And then, you know, you have the buttons and the sensors and the buzzer and the switch and the, you know, microphone on here. And then you can display stuff on this beautiful display. This is one of my so, favorite new products. Not only is the, the silk beautiful on it, classic. front and back, but um, it's a really nice pocketable, portable Python. It, it's just cool to have this with you. I think time. especially paired with the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit, the new one that is yeah. an alpha right now, this is, what, this is where it's at because it's going to be super fun to have portable wireless with a display yeah, output. Put one of those on one of these, and you'll be able to um, do all sorts of wireless stuff with it and display it on the screen. Okay. Next up, um, this is a big deal. We have three different cosplay packs in yes. partnership with Cartoon Network. Yes, so we put the Cartoon Network stickers in the store like a week ago, and we want to follow up with a bunch of cosplay kits. And we have three cosplay kits, and I made them like $40, $50, and $60, yeah. so you can start with like, the basics. You know, Each one of them will give you everything you need to build a bunch of projects, but you get a little bit more with each one. So the first one, if you can click to the left, yeah. So the first one is the, the least expensive, the most basic one to get started with. It's the introductory kit. You get a Circuit Playground Express, which can, again, can run MakeCode, CircuitPython, or Arduino, or other languages. You get AAA batteries, a AAA battery holder, so you can take it portable, and it's a really nice battery holder with a switch and a belt clip, so you can easily attach to your cosplay. You get all 22 Circuit uh, Playground stickers from Cartoon Network with custom art on them, uh, and this the star of the show, which is the NeoPixel strip that Alligator clips on. It's a meter long, and you get 30 controllable LEDs in addition to the 10 LEDs on the Circuit Playground Express. So you get, can do a lot of neat projects, and we've done projects over the last few months in preparation for these packs. So we've got like this sword project that I just showed off. We've got a bunch of um, gem projects, either gems that you can kind of attach onto your belly button uh, non-permanently or in your hand if you want to uh, cosplay a Steven Universe characters. Um, we also did um, the lamp from Adventure Time. We got like six or seven different projects. Yep. The next kit is a step up. You get everything from the previous pack and you also get a battery extension cable so you can extend the battery out so it doesn't have to be so close to Circuit Playground. 
a protective plastic case to keep your circuit playground all t uh, cozy and tidy and uh, less likely to break. They're very durable, but you know, it's good to protect it a little bit. Um, a magnetic clip that you can affix onto the back of the case or the Circuit Playground Express so that you can um, attach to clothing or your backpack without having to actually pin through the fabric, which could um, add little holes, which I think are not preferable. And a roll of capacitive touch nylon metal tape. So this is a really great tape that you can, you get like a whole roll of it, you get a ton, and um, you can use it to make it uh, capacitive touch pads, which allow you to add interactivity really easily when you touch something. Um, it can turn on. So for example, you can go to the overhead real fast. I'll show it's what's used here. Oh, it's so close. It's what's used here in this project um, to detect whether you're holding the handle of um, the sword. And you see when I touch it, oh, when I touch the uh, capacitive touch, it lights up the LEDs. So this is just uh, wrapped around one of the capacitive touch sensing pads. When you touch it, rainbows. When you don't touch it, no rainbows. So easy way to add interactivity and programming to your cosplay project. And the final pack is all of that stuff. Plus you also get a bolt-on kit. You get a triple AA battery holder so your projects last even longer. Uh, a pop rivet kit and um, a Stemma speaker, which we'll show off shortly, which is a way yeah. to easily add a louder sound. There's a little speaker on the Circuit Playground Express, but it's not that loud. Um, adding the speaker with alligator clips will get you um, a much louder sound effect so you can bleep and bloop and people will yeah. hear you even at a busy conference. Yeah, we think a lot of people are going to make this uh, sort of thing. So that's why we included that on the uh, product page Yeah. as well, especially when you have the, the mega pack. Yes. Okay, more blinky ahead. Here we go. We also now have, this is an update to an old kit. It's actually, that's why the PID is like 1679 or something. This is the old instrument 8x8. Um, but we've updated it. Now it has the Neo Trellis um, 4x4 boards instead of the old trellis boards. So uh, it's got full color LEDs. It also no longer uses the Leonardo, which we loved, but is, is no longer carried by us. And so we wanted to upgrade to the Feather, which lets you also do wireless stuff. So you can do Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Here it's shown with the uh, NRF52 Bluetooth Feather. Um, and you can put a battery in it, and it's got a space for a switch. So you get all the parts you need. You do have to do a little bit of soldering and construction. Uh, it's also less expensive, even though it's full color, because we, we worked on making it less expensive to make. Um, and you get this full controllable button pad where you can press any of the 64 buttons and send MIDI commands or wireless commands, what have you. Um, so the pack includes all the, but, uh, the buttons you need, the Neotrellis um, pads, and the plastic enclosure, as well as a Feather M4. And if you want to upgrade it, you can add a switch and a battery. Next up. Next up, this simple TC74 uh, temperature sensor. It's a through-hole I2C temperature sensor. Um, we have it by request so it can go into a pack. And I thought, I don't put this in the store because where to see a through-hole I2C temperature sensor, That's but weird. it's breadboard friendly. And uh, we have Arduino and CircuitPython libraries. Coincidentally, it's the same protocol as the sensor we're putting in the store in a couple of weeks. So I was like, bonus. Cool. We got the code ready to go so you can get going. Okay, there's more. We have 10 pack of vertical style Stemma QT slash quick connectors. So um, yeah. you may have seen these on some of our boards. So I can show this off. Yeah, we call our thing Stemma Stemma QT and it's compatible with Quick, Grove, Gravity, and probably something else. Yes, and of course I don't have a little Oh, what do you want to do? Oh, I was going to show how small they are because they are okay. so small. So to show it, so this is the horizontal style um, one, and you see these cables. They are very nice, solid cables. I really like this connector, actually. I was a little not so sure it would be great, but it's actually <coughs> quite solid, but you can yank it out when you need to, and you can uh, use it multiple times. And this is the vertical style. So this one, you would have it go up. It solders onto the PCB like this, whereas this version goes to the side. So this is the two different types of connectors. So we'd use this one when you want the cable to go out this way, and this one when you want the cable to go up, and now we have both connector types. All right, so let's moving keep along. moving along here. We got a lot of stuff. These are basic um, micro clips. So they're 
low cost, they're simple. Uh, you do have to solder or wire to them, but you know, if you want to have a uh, clip that can connect to um, a circuit board, so I will show a demo real fast because I can show two things at once. Hold on, get my demo going. So on the overhead, so I've got this, uh, you know, the, this temperature demo, so I want to show that. So you get these clips, and when you pull out the back, they pull pretty easily. There's a tab, and you would solder a wire to this tab. So it's a little bit DIY, so you can make your own wires, but then when you yank it out, you see there's a little grabber. Yeah, grab. So then you can grab onto, like, this leg, and now you can have a contact to that without having to use the breadboard. Really useful for larger surface mount parts. Um, these are pretty good little grabbers. I like them. And you get, of course, one of each color. You get like red, yellow, blue, green. So you get a whole pack and uh, with a little bit of soldering, you can make your own very nice test clips. All right. There's more. It's the star of the show. Besides the, the star, community and besides you, Lady. Yeah, thank you. The star of the show today is the Stemma speaker. Which you might yeah. be like, that's the, that's the name uh, of the that's, code. Yeah, Stemma sound. And I'll tell you what I like about this. I like the uh, back of the board a lot. That was because you just you just designed it. No, uh -huh. I didn't design this. Yeah, you said like this is what I want. Yeah, I I uh, had some ideas for yeah, it. Yeah, inspiration. Um, so what's neat about this is that we've had a bunch of projects where you would um, want to add audio output to like a Circuit Playground Express or like a micro bit, and we wanted to have a little slim speaker add-on. So um, what's nice is that there's two ways to connect. You can either use this Stemma JST cable. Which is a two millimeter pitch cable, which we have various types of, or you can connect to these alligator clip pads. So if you have, uh, I do have something with alligator clips. So if you have alligator clips, you can clip onto here, and then red is power, and then this is, sorry, this is ground. This is yeah, and this is signal. Man, these are slippery. Slippery buggers. Okay, so you can clip onto that, and so you can send signal this way, or you can send it this way, either way. Um, I personally like this cable because it's nice and sturdy. And you've got our one watt oval speaker, a class D amplifier, and then of course, it's very clear what it is. And then you can um, easily connect it up to your Circuit Playground Express or Microbit or other audio output type design. And um, then it amplifies it. So you get some bops. And that's how it works. Um, okay. So it's really easy, and uh, yeah, no soldering required. You just plug in this cable, and then you just clip it onto whatever you want. We also have a version of this cable that has um, socket or plug type, like 0.1 inch pitch header, so you can plug into a breadboard. But it's a nice compact design. It's everything you need. Just it's a little speaker, ready to go. You don't need to get an amplifier, wire it up. You know, and can you connect coupling. a bunch of these together? You can. You will get one output per each. Okay. So you would, you know, you could theoretically connect one to like, you know, have one of these cables and parallel them through. You'll just get multiple speakers cool. and then to make sure you have enough battery. All right. And with that is uh, new products this week. Yay. All right. Let's uh, recap. Recap time. New, 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 We've got back in stock or finally in stock, the TFT Gizmo. It's a 240 by 240. Pixel 1.5 inch TFT plus audio amplifier board for your Circuit Playground Express or Blue Fruit. It's a great little add on that adds visual output and audio amplification. We have three cosplay kits in partnership with Cartoon Network. We've got the, uh, the introductory kit, the basic kit, and um, the works kit. Each one has more and more stuff. Based on Circuit Playground Express, you can make projects with Make Code. We've got tons of projects for you to follow along. Um, including this pretty sweet sword, which has capacitive touch when you pick it up. Uh, we've revised the instrument 8x8. It's now the Neotrillus 8x8, and it uses a feather. It's kind of in a redesign, but now you can use any feather board you like, uh, and you get full color Neotrellis output, not just one color. The uh, TC. Uh, 74 is a through-hole I squared C temperature sensor. We've got Arduino and CircuitPython code. It's not the most precise sensor, but it is the most breadboard friendly. These vertical JST SH cables work great with 
quick or STEM IQT cables. Uh, if you're designing a board, you can pop this on uh, to add quick plug and play support. These are uh, a six pack of colorful micro clips. Um, you solder onto the ends and you can make your own test probe cables. The Stemma speaker is uh, easy to use, JST, Stemma, or alligator clip friendly micro um, audio amplifier. It comes with a one watt speaker, class D amplifier, uh, and you just plug and play it with your Circuit Playground Express or anything else that has audio output. Works great with micro bits, breadboards, what have you. Okay, cool. So we're going to do some questions. Um, so head over to adafruit.it slash discord. We will be there in a few minutes because we are going to do some top secret first yeah. from the Adafruit vault. All right. So uh, first up, I got a couple things and then you got a couple things and we have some videos too. Yes. So um, first top secret is uh, there is the upcoming video that we're going to have the co-creator of Boglins is going to be at Adafruit. Turns out Tim he doesn't Clark live too far away. Doesn't live too far away. And we're going to talk about all sorts of things. I only have I for you. Um, next up. There designing... is the Mini Pi TFT. Yeah, this little video we showed. Yeah, we have a little video um, of the Pi TFT. And we also have a cool little machine learning demo on it. So I thought we would show that and then also show our Google Assistant video and then also our little STM32 stuff. So uh, buckle in, we've got a bunch of top secret this week. Here we go. Okay, I believe this is the smallest, cutest pie display ever. Help, I'm trapped in the pie. <laughs> yeah, and here it is on the other monitor. So yes. what is this? This is me just trying out this mini Pi TFT. We were showing earlier machine learning demos using our BrainCraft hat. Uh, which is a nice large display, but this little display could maybe be useful as well. So this time um, I'm running the TensorFlow Lite object recognition demo, wow. but uh, it's on the little display instead. And then this camera, when I point at stuff. Computer keyboard. Yeah, and here's what it looks like on the, the larger screen. Yeah. I don't like my mouse anymore. Likes the computer keyboard. Yeah. Computer keyboard. All right, cool. So it can detect stuff as I point it to it. Um, but what's nice is that this dis uh, display is really tiny. And if you have a Raspberry Pi Zero with like a hardware accelerator, this could be a little display that would go on top of it. Hey, Data, what is this? Well, the BrainCraft hat we've made, we've done a couple of video-based TensorFlow machine learning projects, but now we're going to be doing some audio projects. There's a left and right microphone headphone out and two um, speaker outputs that can connect directly to like a nice big speaker. And I'm actually running Google Assistant. You can see here I got that installed. So let's try it out. Hey Google, what's the weather today? In New York City today, there'll be showers with a forecasted high of 76 and a low of 59. Works pretty well. Currently so this... it's 76 <laughs> and cloudy. You done? So um, for this project, it's not Edge. It's actually connecting to Google servers to do that voice recognition. But this is a great way to get started with um, voice recognition to test out the microphones and the speaker, and so far, so good. Is that CircuitPython on an STM32? It is indeed. This right. is the STM32 F412, which is a nice chip. This one's a particularly big one. And this is the Discovery Board. This is from ST. Um, they make really nice, low-cost dev boards with like all the fix-ins. It even has like these Arduino headers, which is pretty cool. They're going to be very handy for soon. As we finish up porting CircuitPython to the STM32 F4. So today I'm testing a pull request on analog input. So here I've got the uh, Moo editor, which is my favorite CircuitPython editor. Real simple, just reading the analog um, voltage on pin A1 and printing it out. And then Moo has this nice built in plotter. So yeah. you can see as I twist the you're, knob. You're twisting here. I'm twisting here. And then it's making this. Go it's like going that. up and down. So it's the, the analog plotter. So it's really great for looking. I can quickly tell, like, if am I getting smooth um, mm. inputs? Twisty twist. Twisty twist. Am I getting the full range from 0 to 3.3? Yes, I am. So all is good. So this pull request is ready to be merged. So step by step, CircuitPython snakes its way to the STM32. Cool. 
and we've been talking about this for a bit so here it is yay i got these we put them together yesterday and uh they work so far so this is the stm32 f405 feather with the f405 168 megahertz processor here two megabytes of flash got that stem qt quick connector power supply battery charger neopixel reset and then on the bottom i've got uh swd and micro sd and i i just loaded the pi board micro python builds just like the default one and it works of course the pins don't match the names don't match up what it is but it does enumerate it came up as a device uh, and i can bootload to it using the built-in dfu loader so now i'm just going to test all the pins but I, so far so good i mean yep. it just sort of worked i don't know maybe maybe i'm a little lucky this time more uh, you know the harder the work the, the the harder you work the luckier you get you i work, did spend a lot hard. of time on that data sheet i was trying to make sure that everything that's what i got to test next make sure i squared c and spi works on all the different ports and we're working on a case for the pi badge we're not going to talk about this because this is a top secret but this is what it looks like i'm not going to say anything about it there's the previous that's cool and then last up lady ada uh i'm going to show the video what is uh that Bluetooth thing that we were that we're going to show. We're going to show a, a demo of an upcoming addition to the Bluetooth Connect app, which will let you transmit um, images and maybe even GIFs eventually yeah. to Bluetooth boards wirelessly, and it's incredibly fast. So could even work with like the Gizmo and a Bluetooth Express. It might be able Express. to work with like, yeah. a Gizmo so and a Bluetooth Express. Video. So here's here's the prototype. And with that is top secrets back in the vault, all of you secret things. Okay, um, if you're in Discord, adafruit.it slash Discord, we're going to be answering questions. And we're going to do that now. And yes. we're also going to give something away, and then we're going to get out of here. That's right. So ask your questions. Um, I'm going to scroll up a little bit because I think I saw one earlier. Um, can you use the CPX Bluefruit TFT Gizmo and Cricut together? No. It uses the, the Gizmo uses yeah. all the pins. Yeah, plus, you know, you can't, that'd be a, a, Yeah, mechanically also doesn't work. Yeah, it'd be a weird, it'd be a weird stack. One, um, one thing at a time. The question that was asked before, could you chain all those together? Yes, the, you, you could. Uh, each one will be powered and signal separately. Okay. Uh, oh, Eric in, uh, noticed uh, something for, uh, so i will comment on this so yes that bluetooth demo was very fast that's very fast for bluetooth yeah. low energy that's non-compressed yeah. data it is very um, fast. over the uart service we There's a, really like that a lot of hacking went into that more than yeah. you'd think uh for people who know about bluetooth optimizations getting it to transmit 80k per second is not easy bluetooth is usually quite slow yeah and uh just a little reminder if y'all uh, have good names for wireless ides for bluetooth and more um, we're going to be coming up with some. So far, uh, I really like Pi Drop. That's uh, that sounded pretty good. Okay, here's another question. Uh, what was your favorite and least favorite course at MIT, and any update on the Edge badge that you showed off this summer? Ooh, my favorite course at MIT. My favorite course and my least favorite course are actually the same course. Yeah, I was going to say. Which is how it always is. I was going to say. I bet. I bet I know your answer. Yeah, which is feedback systems. Yeah. That's my favorite and least favorite, but it's good class. Yeah. And then um, any updates on the Edge Badge? Yeah, the Edge Badge is the um, Pi Badge, but a different silk, and we're going to add yeah. a microphone and a couple other things because it uh, turns out a lot of people want machine learning conference on badges. On the Edge. Yeah, they want, they want that. Yes. Okay. Um, people really like your Model M keyboard. It's, it's a cheap knockoff, but yeah. close enough. Okay. Well, let's uh, start the giveaway process okay. right now while folks are... Maybe answering or okay. asking questions. Well, we're going to give away this We're going to give away a stem speaker. That's nice of you. Because it's handy for anything. It's a little plug and play speaker that you can yeah. you can attach to whatever you need amplified. What are the rules? Rules are if you won something before, you can't win again. Only one winner per my lifetime. Yeah. First person to call the Magic Radio Shack phone yeah. um, and let it ring twice so that I can pick it up. And uh, after it rings twice, I'm going to say ahoy ahoy. Yeah. 
so you know it's me. And then um, maybe you can say ahoy back. And then I'm going to ask you um, your name and where you're calling from. And a project you're working on or you want to work on. And if you can do all those things, you'll get a free STEMA speaker. We'll, even, we'll ship it to you for free. No purchase required. Yeah. So call the number. Let it ring at least twice so I have time to pick it up. Yeah. And then answer the magical questions. Your okay. name and where you're calling from. All right. I put the number in some of the chats, too. Mm -hmm. Let me just show off this. For reason. Cool demo. Facebook's not letting me put a phone number. Yeah? Phone. Maybe they decided not to allow phone numbers. That's probably a bad idea. Yeah. I guess I don't allow it anymore. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll see what, uh... Might start ringing. What in if, and that's the phone. That's the phone. Bing, bing. It's live. Yeah. Real live phone. All right, uh, let's see if there's any other questions. Yeah, folks, uh... Folks like these keyboards. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me go over to the other mm -hmm. phone here. And if Call to win. Yeah. And Call if, uh, to win. If no one, uh... If no one is here, then I get to. Uh, then we serve. get to keep it. Then I get to keep it. And then maybe next week we give away two prizes. Yeah, that's what we've been doing. That's that happens once in a while. Yeah. Well, you know, we give we've been doing this like so many times. Everyone. Fifty-two something shows a year, mm -hmm. and then you know, times ten years. Yeah. And a lot of people like to watch the show over and over. So if that is it, I'm gonna call it. I think this is it. The phone has not rung. I believe. Oh! Always oh, down to the last That's second. what happens. All right. Go for it. Last minute. Ahoy, ahoy. Ahoy. Hello. Uh, could you please turn down your computer audio? We're working on it. You okay. <laughs> when you're ready. All right. Yes. Okay, great. Hello. Congratulations for calling in the last second into asking Jerry. You've won a fabulous prize. Uh, what's your name and where you're calling from? Oh, yeah. I did not hang up on them. They hang All up. right. Well, <laughs> okay. Well, that's that. We're moving on. Sorry. That was a trivia question. That though. was rare. They were not able to answer the magical questions. All right. That means two prizes. But for they next can week. try again next week. Yeah, that means two prizes for next week. Okay, cool. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Look, some weeks are. All right, so that's Insane. our show for this week. Special thanks to everyone out there, all of the Adafruit team members. I think Zay's uh, in the chat and Slack. Yay, thank Special you, Special thanks to all the community members, all the Adafruit remote team members, all the Adafruit people that help us out, all of you who help keep us in business because we're very happy that we're not taking loans or venture capital because apparently that doesn't always work out. Does so, not. Uh, plus that's why we say it because it's always true. It's like a, it's like yeah. a canary. It's like, as long as we say it, you know it's true. Yeah. And uh, also, I don't know if we'd be able to do as many puppet shows and weird things. If, I don't think, uh, I think some of the things we do, they'd say, yeah, it's too yeah, creepy. Yeah, it's involved. Okay. Um, Thanks, so everybody. That's it. Don't forget the code is Stemma Sound. That is active all the way up to 11.59 p.m. or when I remember to turn it off. We will see everybody next week. Don't forget, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time next week is show and tell. But then at 8 p.m., Adabox unboxing. If you have not, this is really, really it. There is a couple Ada boxes left because some folks' credit cards didn't work out or they moved or something happened. So then we open it back up. This is the one little window for a couple of subscriptions left. You should do it. Don't miss out. It's Halloween edition. And that also sets you up for the holiday edition. Yes. And if you, if you even if you cheat and look at what's yeah. in the box, it's a good value. And you get free shipping. Okay. That is it. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Here's your moment of Zener. Bye.